In the Windows 7 and Vista boot process, again, the first thing that happens is the power on self test or the CMOS and BIOS settings. And again, the second thing that happens is the master boot record or MBR is accessed. It finds the active drive, bootable partition, and reads the boot sector. Now, the third step is a little bit different. Instead of NT loader, the boot sector loads boot manager, B-O-O-T-M-G-R. Finally, on the fourth step, boot manager or the bootloader looks for the active partition on the drive. It then loads the boot configuration data or BCD data store. It uses the information stored in the BCD to finish finding and loading the selected operating system. Let's take a quick look at some of the boot files um, in you know, Windows 7 and, and Vista. So I'm going to open up Windows Explorer on my computer. Now, this is a single boot version of Windows 7 uh, Ultimate, so there's no other operating systems. If there were, um, these files might not necessarily be on the C partition. You know, um, when you install Windows, it'll create like about a 100 megabyte system partition, and then it'll you know, create the first partition, which is really, the I guess, the second partition that it puts the operating system files on, the program files and all that. Um, and so you you know you may not see these bootloader files depending on how you have a, if you have a triple or a quadruple boot or even a dual boot. Um, but if you have a single boot operating system and you go with the default installation procedure, then you'll be able to see these you know these files on the C drive. And now in in addition to being you know single boot and making sure you find the right partition, in this case I'm on the root C drive. You'll also want to go into Windows Explorer under Organize and folder and search options, <clears throat> you, you need to change a few things. Um, by default, this won't be checked. So you'll want to check it, show hidden files, folders, and drives. Otherwise, you won't be able to see any of the boot files because they're hidden. And these options won't be checked, but I always check them. I like to see the full path you know, uh, in the title bar. These will all three be checked, which means they're going to hide operating system files, protected files, file extensions, empty drives. You don't want that, so uncheck all of this. Okay, and then finally down here, this would be checked. You use the sharing wizard that hides the security tab, so that you you know it doesn't give you as precise a level of control over access control entries and discretionary access control lists. So you'll want to go ahead and uncheck that option. So uncheck that, uncheck all these, and then this is checked. So check that, and then when you do that, you'll be able to see hidden files and things. So let's talk about what happens. First, we turn on the computer and it runs the power on self test. And after the post loads the BIOS and CMOS settings and examines the hardware, it then passes control to the master boot record of the MBR. And the path of this is the first sector on the hard drive called the master boot record. Um, you know, the, the hard drive marked is active. Okay, and it could be daisy chained if it's IDE or parallel ATA or EID, or it could be a, a SATA drive, serial ATA, in which case there's only one drive on a, on a controller. From the master boot record or MBR, it goes to the operating system or OS boot record. And this is the first sector of the system partition. And again, if you don't have a quadruple or triple or dual boot, if it's just sort of a default normal plain vanilla installation, it would most likely be drive C. And then so from the post to the MBR to the OS boot record, it then goes to boot manager. All right, and there's a hidden file here. Here it is, boot manager. So you would normally not see that unless you selected all the options to show hidden files. And if you were in the recovery environment and you wouldn't have you know Windows Explorer, you'd have to use a command called a trib and you could change the attribute, uh, attributes of that file. You could make it hidden or make it visible um, you know, with a plus H or a minus H. So it gets to Boot Manager, and then from there it would go and look at the BCD, um, you know, the Boot Configuration Database, or what's called the BCD Data Store. And this is a hidden directory here called Boot. You wouldn't see it unless you enabled viewing of hidden files, but if I go in here, you know, so you know, basically remember that um, post, MBR, OS boot record, boot manager, and then boot manager would go here to boot, and it would basically load the um, you know BCD store. And here's the data here that it would load, and this is you know, basically this, this would be all of the um, menu configurations and you know where to go find you know different partitions and where to go find different operating systems that you had installed. And then once that was selected. Um, you know, once Boot Manager went and then loaded the BCD, um, you know, database, then it would go to WinLoad, which is in the Windows, and let me go down to System32, and let me go all the way to 
Let's see if we can find win load. Alright, and so then it would go to win load exe. Alright, so it goes to win load exe in system 32. And then basically win load exe would load um, NTOS kernel or NTOS kernel, however you want to say it, operating system kernel. So again, I'll just look for that. And there's NTOS kernel exe in the Windows System 32 folder. And then NTOS kernel exe would load HAL DLL. All right, let's go find that file. And there's HAL DLL right there in Windows System 32. And then after that, um, you know, basically HAL DLL would, you know, all, handle all of the low-level hardware details, and then it would load SMSS exe. And that's the session, uh, se I can't even say that, session manager file. And it's responsible for loading user mode graphics components along with, you know, other drivers and things that may be provided by the graphics card manufacturer. But that's also in system 32, so SMSS, let's search for that. And there's SMSS EXE, okay. And then after that, CSRSS EXE would be loaded, which is the Win32 subsystem. So we'll search for that. There's CSSRSSAXE, that's the Win32 subsystem. And then finally, Win Logon would load, and that's where you see the, uh, that would bring up the logon prompt screen where you type in your user ID and your password. And let me just load, let me go look for Win Logon. Alright, and then there's Win Logon EXE in Windows System 32. And then once that happens, then it would load services. Services EXE, and that, that loads all your services. Remember, you can right click on my computer here, and if you want to, you can also use msconfig, and you can also use their command line tools. There's all kinds of ways to do this, good grief, but um, you can also, you know, make your services manual, automatic, turn them on, turn them off, and look up their dependencies in computer management if you want, but that's you know that's loading those services if, if you're new to windows and you like unix and linux just relate that to daemons windows services pretty much function like linux or unix daemons so after services loads services exe um and you know manages or starts and stops services then lsas or lsass would run and that's for authenticating users so and then lsass or LSAS EXE, and that would provide for user authentication. And then finally, the system registry hive would load, and that's located in a completely different directory altogether. And let me go back here, bring it up here. But that would be so the the system registry hive. Remember that the registry is like the central database of like everything in Windows. And I would go to config and system, and let me see. I have permission. Let me get permission to get in there. All right. So system32 config and in this case, you know, registry settings and components would be loaded. And then finally, um, device drivers, and that would be in system32. Let me go back here. Let me go back. Back to system 32 and drivers. Let's go up here and drivers. All right, and then here are all the drivers. Lots and lots and lots of sysfiles. So many drivers. Also, you know, that's another topic entirely, but remember in the etc subdirectory is your host file and your NetBIOS or LM host file. If you ever wanted to edit those or you know, had to clean those because they were infected with malware or spyware or something like that. So that's just sort of a brief breakdown of the Windows 7 and uh, Vista boot process. Now, as far as tools to help you control, manipulate, repair, and alter the boot process or the booting processes, there are many. Um, but we've gone over them in, in several other videos, such as the ones in the recovery environment that you can use if you boot up off the Windows 7 or Vista DVD. 
Um, we've there's a whole video on BCD Edit, which is a command line tool that le very powerful, lets you control you know many 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 different parts of the boot process. And if you multi boot or have multiple operating systems, you'll want to familiarize yourself with BCD Edit. Um, so I'm I'm not going to repeat those things in this video and, and waste you know basically just be kind of wasting time when when you if you want to know more about those things you can go watch those videos. So instead, let's just take a look at some quick graphical GUI tools. And first and foremost, if I right click on computer and go to properties and I go to advanced system settings, let me hop on over here. Um, under startup and recovery, you know, notice the settings that I can configure here. And if I had multiple operating systems, I could choose which one was the default. And you know, you know, please check out the BCD edit video, and you'll see. You know, you could do the same thing with that command line tool, but but I just know that I could also graphically switch back and forth between operating systems here if I wanted to. So if I had Linux or Snow Leopard uh, or Windows XP or something like that, I'd be able to you know, switch back and forth, you know, Ubuntu, whatever, Red Hat, uh, Fedora. And also I could you know, also change the timeout or the time right here. I could do that. And then you can do other things that, uh, you know, in the event of a system failure, what do you want to do? Automatically restart, do a kernel memory dump. So several options there. And in addition, another very useful tool is msconfig. And when you're trying to diagnose startup issues and having problems like that, notice that you can choose between selective startup, diagnostic startup, and normal startup. So this would be loading all of the things that normally start automatically here on the startup tab. And you know this is a relatively new installation, so there's not very much here, not much software installed, but this can be you know dozens upon dozens of programs that automatically load. So it's a very useful tool because if I were trying to diagnose a problem, or get Windows to boot quicker, I could simply disable all of these, you know, these services here, these programs that start automatically. Wouldn't uninstall them, and I could still, I'd still have them. I could still start them by, you know, clicking on them and running them manually. But there's no need for starting all of that garbage automatically, which just really slows my computer down and it kind of eats up my resources, memory, CPU cycles, and so forth. So I'd probably do that, and then that's one option. Also, I could access services here. You know which services um, are running and you know start and stop automatically. I can go here to boot, and here I have advanced boot options. Um, you know for safe boot, no graphical user interface or GUI boot, boot log, base video OS boot information, timeout. A lot of different settings there as well. Okay, so that's that's also a great tool. And of course, if you make any changes or settings, it'll say, hey, you want to restart? And I'm not. I'm gonna I'll exit without restarting. I'll restart later. So some just some nice tools to configure. Uh, Windows 7 and, and, and Vista, the Windows 7 and Vista boot process and, and features if you have either a single or dual, triple or quadruple boot system.